Welcome to the Stuff and Things Podcast. Your home for all stuff related to your favorite things in entertainment. Now, here are your hosts. Hello everybody and welcome back to Walking Dead Wednesday here on the Stuff and Thangs podcast. I am Sam, joining me as always, my partner in crime, it's Stefan. How are we doing this lovely Wednesday morning, afternoon, evening? <laughs> yeah, when, whenever you're listening to it. Hello! Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good buddy. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'll tell you, let's get into it straight away. Um, this episode, I, I tend to watch either two ends of the day. I watch an episode like literally in bed on my iPad, or yep. I watch it in the morning on the TV. And I'm just going to say this right now. I am delighted that I selected the morning this week. Yes, because otherwise up. I probably wouldn't have slept and still be having nightmares now. Yeah, when when I say a bit dark, I mean that in pretty much all senses of that context. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was running around the dark house with some mm. really messed up things. It was... Yeah. Can I say, this is possibly the best episode of The Walking Dead I have seen for a very long time. Oh, it, I, I think it I think it comes down a lot to what you rate as what makes it the best. I think in terms of horror, um, scaring the crap out of me, this one's right up there, people. <laughs> it was even like the, the whole... The way they filmed Connie's parts in the yeah. complete silence and everything. Yeah. It was like, this yeah. is back to what the war... The only gripe I have about this mm. is, as per normal, it's the walking dead. And actually, the bad guys, the the, the main fear factor in this wasn't zombies. Well, but... Well, let's... Yeah, I mean, let, let's dive into that. So, this is the walking dead season 11, episode 6. The title of the episode... On the inside. Yeah, so uh, the cold open to the show is we see Connie, and she's alive. Ha ha! Yay! <laughs> um, and she's with a guy, and so I'm just going to read you my note, because I know later in the episode it's confirmed, definitely. But cold open, we see Connie, she's alive, she's with a guy. Hmm, he looks familiar. Island guy, with Michonne. Is it Virgil? And that's my note. <laughs> Mate, that's better than I got. I got, yay, Connie. Who the hell's that guy? I swear <laughs> yeah. I've seen him before. That's yeah. not, that's not some of that exciting. Who is that? Yeah, no, no yeah. it's great. And, and also, the best thing was when I, because I, I wrote down his name and I was like, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to check this. So, whilst the episode's going on, I'm checking. And of course, I find the character and I'm like, yeah, it was Virgil. Brilliant. And then it's like, oh, Virgil originally encountered an Oceanside. I was like, Oceanside. I'd forgotten that existed. <laughs> yeah, whatever happened to them? <laughs> well, everyone's all in one group at Alexandria. Basically, we had like four thriving communities intertraded, and then the Whisperers wiped most yeah. of them out. But, like, I know the Oceanside got a bit demolished, but there were certain characters, that was it? Yeah. The, the young girl, the, the daughter of yeah. whoever it was. Yeah, I, I she's disappeared, I... she's gone. Yeah, a lot, a lot of them have gone, dead, deceased, no more. Um,. A lot of them just wanted to not be on the show anymore. <laughs> but no, yeah. it's, it, the funny thing is with stuff like that is because of the community and the kind of cast and it is, it just it's some random episode in the future, you could see one of them and be like, oh, where, where the hell have you been? <laughs> yes. yeah. and, and they'll just say something like, yeah, I've been mending fences. <laughs> it's like, wow, for two well, years. Yeah, some, yeah if, they, if they come from anywhere that's not America with COVID restrictions, they've just not been in half a season. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's also... Yeah, okay. Applying the real world, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah. So so this episode breaks into two parts, and I want to deal with the horror part first, which is uh, obviously Connie and, and Virgil. Um, so the, the little bit of background to it before we dive into the House of Horrors is uh, Kelly goes off looking for Connie, uh, then you've got Carol um, and a small group going looking for her, uh, Rosita, yep. and the one neither of us like. Yeah. Um, so they they are obviously then going to go looking for Kelly. Uh, Kelly finds some clues, including the slingshot and her sister's notebook. Her sister's writing things like "I feel like I'm being watched" and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, all of that was kind of, uh, you know, 
creepy. Add added to the creepiness. Added to the kind of. But I will say as well, when she found that notebook and was reading these notes that were like really kind of paranoid and freaked out. Yeah. Did you have any inclination that the stuff in the house was in her head? I can't. No. Do you know what I didn't actually? Because because I did right up until the point where she's looking through the wall. And Mate, Vir- that scene. And and Virgil is fighting them as well. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> They're real. <laughs> They're but there. Okay. Because, because I don't know about you, but the, the idea that this long-haired uh, escaped character from the ring suddenly appearing in The Walking Dead was kind of like, this 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 is weird. This, this Mate, is, I mean, this that, brought, that scene where they were walking down the stairs and stuff, that brought back like nightmares from my childhood of watching The Ring. <laughs> my God. There's a scene where they're walking through and you kind of see a little bit of it scuttling along behind it, like across yes, a corridor. Yeah. I genuinely thought, oh my God, it's like a rabid dog or something's in there. Yeah. Like they've got a dog chasing her down. Oh no, 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 no. It's, it's a, way it's more a messed, messed up than up that. Person. So. The the guy Virgil says at one point, like, I've never seen people this far gone. Now, we are 10 years into the apocalypse. So I'm basically trying in my mind to go to what has happened to these people. At what point did I forget how to walk when bleached yeah. white skinned? Yeah, at what point did what? I basically descend back to primate kind of... Yeah, you know, behavior. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, man. I, I've, I've seen a fuel shortage and a uh, people fighting at the pumps ah, in this country. Yeah. I, I've seen uh, people basically go go to A and E uh, casualty because they were fighting over toilet roll. All of my, the, all of my kind of clarity of thought around how quickly the world would fall and how civilization would crumble has been greatly changed by the pandemic and witnessing how people act. Um, you know what, you so, got a very fair point there, so, actually. So, yeah. so, 10 years in? Yeah, I'm buying this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, up they... until being told the other day that a fuel tanker driver got mm. assaulted by someone because yeah. he wouldn't overtake to get to the petrol station mm. quick enough. Yeah. yeah. I now believe that, yeah, actually, in fairness... Yeah. Four years in, I reckon people are like this. Four, four, mate. I'm going four months, given on the information. <laughs> I, I, I just can't go. There, there was a uh, TV show in the UK. Um, it was on Sky. Uh, I don't know how many people saw it. It was called Cobra. Uh, it was called Cobra because in the UK, you have a uh, the top chiefs, if you like, the prime minister. Whenever there's an emergency, it's a, a group get-together, and it's called Cobra. That's the group. So mm-hmm. this TV show focused on a uh, an event which caused the UK power grid to completely go offline. It was like a solar flare. Um, the power was completely out and what they had to do is replace all of the transformers. It's like a, uh, a nightmare scenario that in theory could happen. But, you know, there's backups and all sorts. But in this scenario, it takes out everything, including the backups. So the whole of the UK is plunged in the darkness. After three days, people are savage out on the streets, rioting and looting. Okay? I remember watching that. Now, this was like 2018, 2019. I remember watching that going, it's a little bit far-fetched. You know, I don't... I <laughs> it's don't, enjoyable, but come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Civilization would not crack that fast just because they didn't have TVs, they didn't have electric, you know... Yeah, I'm wrong. I, I I genuinely now believe that that show dang played it. <laughs> and it the would government be tells anarchy. us the government tells us that COVID is not related to stomach bugs, yeah. and there will not be a shortage of toilet tissue. Yeah. and people end up in A and E because of rousing yeah. shops over toilet. Literally so yeah, fighting people to the death for the last bog roll was was an insane thing so coming back to the the walking dead then uh 10 years in a house full of people who have completely lost their damn minds one of them was fighting virgil and by the way the scene where she's in the wall and the creepy thing starts crawling in behind him yeah i'm like oh what the hell and he's fighting this guy does he say hungry to him it, it sounded he to mutters me, something, yeah. yeah. It sounded to me like he went hungry. 
Which if I was that guy, I'd be like, then go eat, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, yeah, eat me, not me. Alone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the, well, there's a thing. Were they cannibals? That I, I think they must have been because yeah. were, when she goes into that room and there's like skulls yeah. and bones everywhere. Yeah, I'm going that they have gone full on cry. Yeah, yeah. That that. Let's let's just assess the fact that that house is messed up. Don't go in that house ever. Yeah, that now has Ever. to be burned to the ground. Yeah, um, th- th- literally. I mean, I wrote down in my notes, um, Kelly. Yeah, what I wrote in the notes is, Connie's gone and they've moved into some sort of creepy ass house. It's like a horror movie in there. Now this is before we've seen these people, right? Yeah, and we have the scene where she's like, "Oh, I'm going to go look around because she she." Because she's deaf, she can like feel the vibrations and stuff, and she uh, she's convinced there's like movement in the house. Yeah, <laughs> she was right. <laughs> oh, um, when she walks down the corridor and all the pictures have got the eyes scratched yeah, out. Yeah, I was already starting to go. Yeah, I've seen films like this. I but, normally turn them off. But I'm like, nope. this is this this is a damn murder house. I'm like, there, there is somebody in there who's this is a murder house. Is it a whisperer house? I'm like, I'm like running through all these scenarios in my head. And she goes to the the um like uh bathroom cabinet with the mirror, and of course I'm like, oh no, this is like one oh one oh one horror. She looks in the mirror, she opens the cabinet, she then closes it, and there's someone's gonna be behind her. Yep. So I am literally just <laughs> waiting. I'm like, oh here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh no. And she's like, oh there's a hole at the back. I'm like, okay, well what's gonna go on? That? And then of course there's a creepy ass thing looking at her. She freaks out. I freak out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. In this in this episode, I'd say three to five very legit jump scares <laughs> that had, that had me like, oh, what the hell? Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. The, you know it's good when. So the way my my living room is such that is set up is yeah. we've got the sofa in front of the telly. Yeah. And then to the side of the TV is like my desk area yeah, with the computer yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Now I'm sat on the sofa watching the episode. Yeah. And Nat who she watches The World Beyond with me. She's watched a bit of Fear with me. She missed so much of The Walking Dead that she's just like, Do you know, that's yours. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. You you know, we got together, I think it was like episode season eight or nine. She's like, I have missed too much for that. No, that is yours. Yeah. You crack yeah, yeah. on. Yeah. So she's sat on the computer next to me and she has this thing the same as I do. If something's on the telly, you have to keep looking over. Like, oh, what are you watching? <laughs> Yeah, what are you yeah. watching? She looked over at one of the bits. I think it was the mirror and the eye. She yeah. nearly damn fell off the chair. Yeah, it was man, that, amazing. That, yeah. yeah, I, I mean, yeah, she had wrong, no man. idea what was going on. Looked over and went, "Whoa, fuck, whoa, what the, <laughs> what are you?" And it was like, I was dying. Oh, it well, was amazing. I, I'm glad that happened for you to to take you know take the summer of levity. Yeah. Uh, yeah oh, and she good. didn't look again for the rest of the episode. No, no, I. I, I, I generally watch the rest of the episode and every time it went to her going around the house and the way they shot it because she's deaf, the silence. Oh, that was amazing. I, I'm like, this is so good, but I, I, I can I fast forward this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't like this at all. And when she felt the movement and the way they did it, so like when she put her hands on it, the, the sound came in so you understood that she was feeling the movement of someone coming running at her yeah and it's a guy on all fours what the hell <laughs> yeah, that was so messed up like they're, so... they're messed up and then there's i would rather take on the whispers to be fair man I, I... Yeah, <laughs> whispers the dead let me fight now when we were going into this you said about you know once again the kind of enemy in this is the people what i've always found funny about that is is we talk about a lot you know the, the dead being a threat and everything like that it's kind of been the show from day one. You know, when you, when you think about it, I know season one, obviously, everyone's terrified of the dead. And season two, you have your first herds. And then three, you, you meet the governor. <laughs> so so from that point yeah. on, it's like the bad guys. But, you know, season two, there was shame. Uh, season one, there were plenty of confrontations. And it's just interesting, like Rick Grimes himself at one point, says like the title of the show the walking dead isn't the zombies i said they are the walking dead yeah, yeah. It's, it's them it's like we are the walking dead it's like something he got from his grandfather or his father from the war and yeah. it's like you know every day you wake up you know while well, i'm dead and now i need to fight to be alive again it's like yeah. messed up psychology but at the same time it kind of works 
Um, so in the murder house, <laughs> what was yeah. that? Um, <laughs> I just I got a call at the murder house. I mean, they managed to get because they get separated by that slide door going across, which again was like, oh wow, this is this is orchestrated. This is messed up. Yeah, um, and massively. Then Vir- yep, and then Virgil sort of fights his way to a room. Connie's managed uh, to kind of get to a place where she can see him through a hole in the wall. We have this creepy thing crawl out of a hole behind him. And yeah, she, it like comes she, like, from like a hole wall. under the desk, and you're like, "Oh man!" I, I just, it's like, what the hell is going on? Um, and he fights it, you know, he stabs it, manages to get away, and then. He starts because he obviously all he can hear is the hammering on the wall. He starts stabbing through the wall, and Connie's like, "Ah!" <laughs> um, yeah, she's trying reunited. to get through that scene. You know when you like panic because you're like, surely they wouldn't. Yeah, like she's behind the wall, banging like almost Morse code to tell him, "Look, you know it's yeah. me." And he's like, yeah. "Oh, there's another one. I'm gonna yeah, mess it yeah, up. I'm gonna mess yeah. it up." And you're like, "Stop! Stop!" Yeah, Stop. yeah, dude, don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> we have not waited to be reunited with this character this long for you to kill her by accident. <laughs> um, Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, great. I mean, they're reunited. We then have, like, a moment of calm, which I always like in stuff like this. It's like frenetic, frenetic, and then just have that little moment of calm because that enables you to really kind of... Mm. You know, just make, allows you to pause, and then it makes the next frenetic thing even bigger. If that makes sense. Yep. Um And the moment of calm is good because obviously there's that little reference to Michonne and needing to get to Michonne's family. Um, Virgil knows that Michonne's carrying or going after Rick because she thinks Rick's alive. You, if you remember back now, she yeah. talked to him about the boots, about the phone, and the and the the etching on the phone. And so he's now gonna go to the group to Alexandria, etc., who where he's never been. Yeah, and with that information, so we're about to have a, a scenario where Carol, etc., could all be learning that actually it looks like Rick could be alive. Yeah, Rick's and alive, and Michonne's gone. Can now, someone tell RJ that mummy and daddy have both pissed off? Now, could you tell... <coughs> well, what do you do? Do you tell, do you tell Judith that? Because Judith's going to be pissed if she went without her. Well, yeah. But, I mean... I, I and mean, does uh, Judith then become a flight risk because she's going to try and find daddy? Yeah, I mean, we've covered this before about the fact that Michonne just leaving Judith like that and RJ is not realistic <laughs> we yeah. we kind of covered that now we knew she was exiting the show um but it, that yeah it didn't feel it's still not right to me I, i'm so we're just gonna park that again but i i do think that's gonna it's a potential opening to hearing those characters be discussed again which i like um so yeah, they they managed to fight their way through the murder house. Uh, he's got like a table leg, I think, and he's just cracking them in the head. Yeah, uh, she's got his knife, obviously, and they get down the stairs. And I'd <clears throat> I'd love to know what your opinion on this. When she gets down the stairs, because they're so disorientated, she sees the dead body of the walker that came through the door with with them. Yeah, so she's it's like you actually now this is great acting for me. You see the realisation on her face of where she is. She looks to her right, realises that's the door. You know, that's mm-hmm. where they came in and they go out. So she knows the dead are at that door. She looks down and, like, the plan, like, just obviously pops into her head of what to do in that moment. And all of it is conveyed literally in her facial expressions. And I don't know about you, but I mean, I wrote down uh, Walker Gut Camo play by Connie is brilliant. Yeah. See, I didn't know where it was going. I was a bit different. I was watching it <clears throat> as she pulls the zombie in front of her. Yeah. And I thought to myself, okay, is she trying to use like that as a distraction from these horrible people? Yeah. And then she starts covering herself in it. And I'm like... Okay, so is this so that, like, if they attack her, they're going to get covered in the guts as well? <laughs> is she going to start shouting tainted meat? <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, I'm genuinely, that's my genuine thought. I was like, yeah, yeah. she's covered herself to try and protect herself. 
Yeah, no. I, okay, I, I, maybe I, that would work. And then she suddenly opens the door, and I'm like, "Oh, you clever girl! Wow!" Yeah, yeah no, I, I absolutely loved it. I, I, I know, I know, it sounds stupid, but I absolutely loved it. It just because, like I said, she's conveying all of this through her actions, her acting with her face, and so you're watching it. And like you, I didn't clock straight away what her plan was. I, I don't yep. know. I, I, I didn't mean to say I did. She, she. So when she's dragging it over, I'm like you. I'm like, what's she doing? What's she doing? She's covering herself in the guts. I'm thinking. Well, but there's no way out. You know, yeah. she can't be thinking, you know, the guy's been stabbed, you know, he's not running. <laughs> so, well, yeah. you know, what, what's, what's your plan? And and she's like covering herself and I'm like, I don't know. And then when she opened the door, I was like, oh, wow, that is a brilliant plan. Yeah. <laughs> and did you, because these people in this house, 10 years in the apocalypse, have the majority of them just been in the house? Because they tried jumping on the dead. Did you did you see that? Yeah, one guy launches himself from the top yeah. of the banister onto him, and you're like, um, what, what are you doing? I mean, the, you know, the dead rip through him as they would. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, which it was... makes you think that they have literally been locked yeah. in away like, in this like, house. Like, was this house like an asylum or something at some point? And ten years have gone by, and they've been eating each other. <laughs> Literally, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I have no clue. I mean, you know, you could get more info probably, but I, I just loved the way it was done. And and they escape, they get outside, and a couple of them have made it out. And you could see her like, oh, like, oh no, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> on, I'm on my, I'm on my own here. And then you see them drop, uh, you know, catapults to the face. And then, you see, by the way, I don't know if you spotted this because the focus is on the reunion between Kelly and Connie, right? Yep. So there's this beautiful kind of like slow down, the light's just on them and it's really nice and she kind of signs I'm sorry and she's like whatever and they go towards each other. That's that's where the focus is. In the background, you can basically see Carol just cutting through them. <laughs> yeah. She's just like a sword in hand or whatever, just like dead dead what the hell are you dead i don't care <laughs> yeah. there's there's no questioning between no. zombie and weird thing no. anymore just yep yeah. dead 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 yep, dead yep, okay yep. Dead, dead 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 sorted so uh, that amused me <laughs> just seeing that in the background uh rosita was there as well of course also helping unalive a fair few people um yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was it. And so they're reunited. That was great. Um, but the whole murder house thing in this episode was, was incredible. I mean, I, yes. if you're a Walking Dead fan from years and years ago, like and I know so many are who stopped watching, I would happily put this episode in front of them and say, just watch this. Look, look what the show's doing, you know, at the moment. Just watch this. I, I think all of them would be impressed. This is yeah. back to almost like the prison. Remember the prison where it was dark and they're running yeah. around the prison and stuff like that? Yeah. It had vibes of that on it. But is it. How many times, me and you have done this so much, how many times in watching The Walking Dead, watching Fear, have me and you gone, they've missed an opportunity with this. If they just made this darker, if they just like, you know, yeah. gone a bit slower, you could have had so many like creepy ass things. Uh, yeah, so- this episode, they hit them all. this episode no no tone it down god i was terrified i need to sleep yeah i I am not okay (laughs) so yeah uh, the odds of me going into a creepy ass house have have once again diminished greatly uh yeah the next time like i'm out doing viewing at properties and like oh we got this barn here nope Keep it to yourself, son. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's a lovely up. Nope, 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 nope. Murder barn. <laughs> no, <laughs> moving I'm on. Good. Yeah, moving on. Um, so, <clears throat> is there any other aspects of that that part of the episode you wanted to go over talk about? Uh, not from this episode. I think going forward, it's going to be interesting because if I remember correctly, mm. Connie was left to die by the other one that we don't like too much. Yeah, who's in the group with Carol? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that surprises me already, the fact that she's like, yeah, let's go find her. Because well, you left her for dead. Yeah, it's good. It's going to be fun. I, I love it. I love uh, I love a bit of tension. There's going to be a very fun signed conversation between Connie and Kelly, with <laughs> Kelly just looking up going, you did what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. It's like, oh, how do you get separated? And you'll just see Connie look across at the woman like... Hey, uh, yeah. so you remember then, okay. okay. Yeah, she signs like three things that they don't translate for us. Just You see mm. three side movements and Kelly goes, that bitch! 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you just here pick up a gun. <laughs> yeah. Give me a moment. I'm going to go have a chat with her. Why do you need a gun? We're just going to talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Where, where's Daryl? I, I really hope one of the first things she asks is where's Daryl? And they're all going to be like, I don't know. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, speaking of Daryl, see how I did that. Nicely done. As always. Uh, back with the Reapers again. Um, and Daryl's given her like a little test, I think, by Pope. They've got this uh, one of Maggie's people that we knew has been there for a while. Yep. And this guy has been beaten up. And you get to see quite graphically his fingernails being removed. I didn't need to see that. Yeah, that was that a, was That was, yeah. That was gross. It was like um, we cut away from the horrible, creepy yeah. murder house to fingernails being ripped off. And I'm yeah. like, oh, it doesn't get better. It no. does not get better. No, no, this episode had it all. <laughs> um, so the, this group of Reapers with, with Pope kind of overseeing, this guy's torturing him. He's doing a bang-up job just beating this guy to death. I mean, his eyes are closed pretty much from the swelling. There's blood everywhere. Yeah. He's been sliced all over the place. His fingernails are being removed. So let me just clarify, this guy is nails, because this guy, after all of that, has not given up Maggie and the yeah. group. So, first of all, wow, because, I don't know about you, Like the minute they went, right, we're going to remove your fingernails, okay, do you want an address? I'll take you, I'll take you there, it's cool. Yeah, I'll take you myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take and I'll friggin' help, you know, just leave me alone. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so... I, I don't was... even think they'd have to get as far as fingernails for me. No, that the first f- punch in the, the face, fr- I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, do you know what, actually... Yeah. Ow! That <laughs> yeah. really hurt. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, do pain. I'm sorry, but no, that's my thing. Pain is pain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Pope kind of puts Daryl forward, and again, I think this is like a little bit of a test, a little bit of a kind of like, come on, you're on our side. Get to the torture in, big boy. Um, yeah. There's a bit of tension with the guy uh, who was doing the torture first. Um, I know she. I know Lynn named him a couple of times in the episode, but it's gone clean out of my head. Like I've got him down as dickhead. I don't know. That's... No, that's what he calls Daryl. <laughs> oh yeah, is, which makes me laugh. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah. So he's he's the one side. Um. It's called Carver or something like that. Something or, like that. Yeah. yeah. It was like Cutter Carver. Something that sounded menacing. Anyway. Um. And so Daryl basically approaches the guy. Now Daryl. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make my mind up on this. Is Daryl trying? Do you think Daryl's trying to communicate to him like, just give me something made up, or is Daryl genuinely doing this because he knows he ain't got a choice? Ah, uh, I was kind of yeah. I was stuck in a middle ground with this because it's yeah. like okay, so. We've already had the whole "you don't know me, shut up" in the prison cells. Yeah, and the and, guy, and the guy went, okay, cottoned on. Enough. Yeah, 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 the guy okay. cottoned on fast and was like, "Yeah, okay." Now with this, it's kind of like, "Give me something, give me something." I'm gonna have to torture you in a minute, so you need to give me something. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Are they gonna?" Like, I was waiting for him to just say some random crap. Mm-hmm. So when he cuts his finger off, and I'm like, "Oh, Daryl, yeah. Daryl, that's a yeah. bit far, mate. That's a little bit." Let's dial this back just a little bit, Daryl. You've cut his fucking finger off. Well, they literally didn't give him a choice. I mean, they said, like, it's time to start cutting things off. Yeah, but you know, so you're just like, wait a minute. They, <laughs> they handed Daryl the knife, and it's kind of like... Basically, if Daryl didn't do it, someone else was going to do it. Um, yeah. And, I, I and think if Daryl guy... didn't do it, that was him giving away as not being one of yeah, the Yeah, because the guy, the guy being tortured actually tells Daryl he's got a gun. Yeah. Because because in that moment, I was kind of like, oh, he's saying it because he's like, oh, well, you've got a knife, but that guy's got a gun. Why am I afraid of you? But he wasn't. He was telling Daryl, like, Daryl, you got to go through with this because that guy's yeah. going to shoot you. Yeah. It uh, was, so, that was the moment when he says about the gun. That's when I was kind of like, okay, they, this guy's yeah. not oblivious to this. This is definitely no. something between the two of them. Yeah. So when he says they're in the yellow house. Yeah. My assumption was, well, that's bollocks. He's just given yeah. something crap and Daryl's gone, ha-ha, yeah, I told no. you I did it. There it is. No, I, I, basically, I, I think he, he knew if it was complete nonsense, Daryl was dead. I, I think that's what his thought was. But his thinking was, like, if I give him, like, it's a yellow house, Maggie and that lot, if they're in the brown house, should be able to see them come in and get the flock out of there. Yeah. Um, as it was, there was, like, a, a hiding spot you know, a, a kind of cellar thing. 
What um, I so... didn't get was if this guy was taken at the same time as Daryl was. Yeah. He was taken probably in the woods because it looked like he'd been there for longer. Yeah. How did he know they were in a yellow house on what street? That was their rendezvous point, remember? Because that was where right. they had been showing yeah. up to. Okay, yeah, that makes it more sense. Because in my head, when he said the yellow house, I was like, how does he know? Yeah, what? And how did he know? That <clears> is their <throat> rendezvous point. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so they do get that, and uh, Pope sends Daryl and this group out to, to find Maggie and that. When they arrive, uh, Leah's in charge, um, and she's kind of directing everybody. And Daryl's Darryl's so her, clever. Yeah. Daryl is so clever. Finds a way of basically alerting (laughs) anybody who's nearby that they are there. Just wiggling Um, the um, lamp pole. He he makes the um, telegraph poles move. Yeah, and so all the wires are jumping around. Um, So Maggie spots out of the window. Now, at that point, I'm kind of like, oh, crap, they are there. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, oh, no. The The guy genuinely snapped and gave up. Um, but no, he he was still kind of giving them a chance by picking out the wrong house, if you like. So they're there, they search the house, um, yeah. and then they start searching all the other places and everything. <laughs> I mean, just I don't know about you, but I'm kind of like, <clears throat> what 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 does Daryl do in this instance? Because if, for example, they found Maggie and that lot, are they going to kill Maggie and the group instantly, like they've done every other time? You know, like any other yeah. time the Reapers have come across everyone, it's not like, right, let's capture them and torture them. It's like they're deaf. Yeah. They just throw knives from distance. So yeah. Daryl's not going to be able to do anything about that. Now, of course, if they capture them, then Daryl could go like, okay, there's four of them, four of us. If I release you, there's five of us. We win. <laughs> yeah, and there was, um, a, there was a scene where Daryl goes and checks like the upstairs of a house. Yeah. And he comes down and says, I know it's all clear. And in my yeah. head, I'm like, was it clear? Has he yeah, just seen them yeah. in a room and closed the yeah. door and gone? No, nope, nothing in yeah. there. No. Nope. Yeah. So when when you get when he spots the like trap door thing with the rug, yeah. and he's kind of like trying to remove the rug like with no one noticing. What I loved right is the way he gives Maggie etc information. Yes. The way he sort of has a not he sort of picks an argument with that guy. And he's like, well, you know, if I was them, I'd run, you know, (laughs) like really clearly says run. He then says they'd be running, running, they'd run. Yeah. And like, I was kind of watching it through and it took a minute to me to land it like he's telling them to run. (laughs) And then, and then the the guys are like, what's your point? He's like, well, of course they're going to run that you got 20 old guys, you're armed to the teeth, you've got walls. You know, they're not going to attack you. You know, they're, they're running. So, again, I'm just like, Jesus. Like, Daryl's, like, really telling... Because, um, like, my initial thought was, he's just giving Maggie info. Like, there's 20 of them. <laughs> They've got guns. <laughs> you yeah. don't fuck with them. Um, but he was actually telling them to run. He said yeah. it you know, like countless times and it kind of landed with me only when the guy spotted the trap door thing and opened it and it was empty and they were running i was like oh shit of course he was literally telling them to run <laughs> yeah run i'm distracting yeah. him get yeah. the out yeah yeah uh, which i thought was great and again it's a it's a tribute to the character of daryl that i mean I, i've been re-watching the show season one and season two currently with my daughter yes and daryl then it's very different to the Daryl you get six, seven, uh, season, probably end of five, but six, seven, eight, nine, definitely. Was that when he forgot how to talk and became yeah, the grunter? Yeah, he just grunts and it, it, I mean, it was crap. The guy wasn't the character we all enjoyed and liked initially. Yeah. And, I, and I know why. Genuinely, I know why. And that is that Scott Gimple, who was the showrunner for all those seasons was just a massive comic book fan, and Daryl's not in the comics. So when he was writing, when he was putting stuff, literally taking it from the page for all the other characters, he had nothing for Daryl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Daryl was literally a TV creation, and he just had nothing for him. He just had no, He just like kept adding him into things. Like, oh, and Daryl was there. And, yeah. and it was rubbish. Um, whereas now we have someone who clearly understands... Daryl is a character, and we got him back again. You know, 
I remember it's like everyone, all the like season one and two stuff about you know everyone laughs at the redneck till the zombie apocalypse, yeah, and stuff like that. And, and now you got this kind of yeah, he's he, he is he has been a badass from day one, and he is someone who has lived through this for ten years often like surviving in the wild during that time which a lot of the sort of people you see now haven't done yeah a lot of time on his own he has gone through some messed up stuff yeah massively gone through some messed up stuff and is still there and you know he's he's smart and he's he's been smartened up by the people he's been around like everyone he's been around and spent time with he has learned from you know don't be wrong he's made some dumbass decisions at the time but hey you know the whole war thing like i said the, the stuff they made him do during that was like daryl wouldn't do that yeah and i'm gonna now, drive a truck into a wall no you're not yeah you know what they were trying to convey was like oh he snapped he's so angry it's like well i'm sorry but we're seeing a situation now where daryl's in that where daryl should be angry daryl you know daryl under gimple would have snapped and punched pope in the face yeah and we'd all been like well daryl's dead <laughs> Yeah. Now we're seeing someone who's learnt from Rick, from all of his instances with the governor, from his interest. And he's now just kind of going with what he's got to go with yeah. to get out of it, yeah. Yeah, you know, he's surviving. You know, think about like Negan, that situation where he was literally dog shit sandwiches and stuff like that. He just had to get through it, just keep going, yeah. keep getting through it. And so he's kind of like all of this stuff that's happened to him, he's now in a position where he's like, okay, I've just got to get through this. I think he hopes he can bring her with him. I think, you know, his end game is to get away from this group, get back to his people. I think with her, I think that's his hope. Um, There is something that happens in this episode, which I don't know what you think about it, but it's when she has a right go at that guy about, oh, so you're looking out for me. Well, what about when I got put in that building and set on fire? So she wasn't in on it. (laughs) Yeah, that surprised me. Yeah, because we we discussed that, and you know her reaction to it at the time. We were like, "Oh no, she's such a great actor." Because when she got out, she was just like, "Yeah, that was all part of the plan." Well, clearly not. She just yeah. got out, realized what had happened, and was like, "Form ranks, <laughs> yeah, you know, don't fall speak in, fall out, in. don't yeah. be angry." So it's like it's almost like they're all terrified of Pope. Yeah, which given the way he killed that kid the week before. Which Daryl brings up again. Yeah, you can kind of understand. Yeah, why yeah. are you here then? Because Pope yeah. scares the shit out of yeah. me. Yeah, fair play. Yeah. The thing, the thing I liked about that as well is I think the guy would look at that and be like, "Yeah, okay, that's quite a genuine answer." Because yeah. you wouldn't. A tough guy doesn't say that. Do you know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, rough tough guy doesn't go, "Oh, because I'm scared." Yeah, so I'm, I don't it, want to end up under the boot of that guy in a yeah. fire. Yeah, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. So when he said it, I think the guy was like, oh, "Okay, yeah." Right. Yeah. But when they return, they basically get back to Pope and say, like, oh, you know, they were there, but they got away. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm expecting the Pope to be pissed. I'm expecting yeah. him to be angry. The he's fact laughing, he he's doesn't, laughing. he's yeah. yeah, the fact he laughs makes you go, oh, dear. And he basically says he finished torturing that guy, and then you see him, he's now a walker tied to a tree. Yeah. Um, and he's like, I got all what I needed to know. And then he walks off with this guy. They look back at Daryl and Leah and laugh and then walk off. That is uneasy as hell, isn't it? Yeah. Because what the hell has he found out? I think Alexandria. I reckon so. I don't think he spoke about Daryl. I think he's spoken about Bigger. Yeah. I, I, I think that he's basically just said... He's basically trying to, you know, hiding in a house somewhere. Yeah, all right, one thing. But where are they based? You know, that's the bigger question. Where can yeah. I find these people? Where are they living? And I, I, I think that's what he's found out. Because, yeah. because if, you know, if that's the case, then that's going to be, <clears throat> you know, that's the collision course we're on, isn't it? Because if, if this guy in the Reapers are like, okay, this guy tells me about a place called Alexandria, Daryl's going to be like, oh, really? Where's that then? <laughs> yeah, Alexandra. That doesn't even sound yeah. like a real place. Yeah, like, oh. yeah that's, that's made up, right? Um, but then he's going to be in that. But what again? And I like the storytelling in this, okay? Because remember when Negan was with the Whisperers and they went to attack? I was top? just about to say this to you. Yeah, yeah. And now we've got Daryl could potentially be in that same kind of position, and it's going to be interesting because it's like a few times now where 
we and you have both gone, why is it Negan's the one making sense? We should hate that guy. And why is it that he's the one making sense here? Yeah. Um, and it's just going to be interesting. And Daryl put in that same position could then possibly turn to Negan and go, okay, I think I get it now. <laughs> you yeah. know, to, for the greater good, I had to do some shit. Um, you know, like cut that guy's finger off. Um, is pretty messed up when, you know, you were, you were mates just a few days before and stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting if they are reunited. I did find it kind of funny about Negan, Maggie, and Atlock escaping. So they're all going to be aware that Daryl's with this group, but they also should hopefully be aware from reading between the lines that Daryl was helping them. You'd hope so, yeah. I mean, they they should. Be. I mean, you know, he was, yeah. I mean, Mac, you know, she's known him long enough, Maggie, that I think she should be able to read between the lines there. Um, especially with the fact they they saw him try and move the rug over the door. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, at least I'd like to think so. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be interesting the fallout from this episode, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, we're we're six episodes in the season eleven. I don't know about you, mate. I'm really enjoying it. Um, Honestly, this, yeah. And with those bonus episodes, I was really worried I wouldn't. The, the bonus episodes, the ten, I, I'm just going to wipe from my mind. Um, because th- these have all been a, a real quality. And the thing that I'm liking is the continuity of story. We're going from episode to episode and everything's moving forward. Mm-hmm. And every episode, whether it's the, the kind of jump scares, murder house, the Reapers storyline, the, the Commonwealth, we're getting information. We're getting a mixing with action. Uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I, I think, um, I think it's good. The, the fact that Alexandria are facing starvation, um, you know, every aspect, everything we're looking at, there is stuff going on, and it's interesting, and it's it's different. Yeah, there's a lot going on, but it's not just waffle background crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like, oh no, um, uh, Jeff needs a new pair of trousers, uh, so we're gonna do a run. Um, <laughs> anyone else need anything? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, we lost Jeff, <laughs> so we didn't need the trousers. So we're going to use the trousers as a flag now. Yay! <laughs> That's a season's worth of storyline. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is good. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. And I hope everyone else listening to us and watching the show is enjoying it as well. Uh, let us know. Drop yeah. us a message. Um, you can get in touch via the Facebook page, facebook.com slash stuffandthangspodcast. You can find our website, stuffandthangspodcast.com. You can find us on Twitter, podcast of Thangs. You can find us on Instagram, if Stefan can remember the password. It's there somewhere, um, yeah. You can email us, it's either Sam or at Stefan at stuffandthangspodcast.com. Uh, you know, Carrier Pigeon also works. But yeah, get in touch, let us know what you're thinking. Yeah, what have um, we got? We've got, t- I believe, what, two more episodes until the break? Yeah. Yeah, two so, more episodes until the the first break. Oh, mate, that remember. means the next episode of Big Character Dies. If you follow the old <laughs> patterns, yes. If, if you follow the old patterns, someone's in trouble next week. Yeah, definitely. Um, but until then, uh, we will be back next Wednesday talking about The Walking Dead. Uh, until then, my friend, everybody, you take care. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening to the Stuff and Things podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on Facebook or online. Simply search the Stuff and Things podcast to join in our conversation every week.